Hi, so this is Emerson Avila and this video is my midterm project um, for the museum studies in anthropology class. Um, so for my project, I decided to concentrate on the military affiliated population in San Antonio. Um, I thought this was the best choice for me because um, I myself am part of this population, although I'm not from here. Um, I'm still very tied to the population, one, because I still use um, VA benefits and uh, Texas be uh, military benefits um, here at UTSA. And I also work at the Center for Military Affiliated Students. Um, so I thought that was a good leeway in getting access to um, the people within the population. And really it felt like a nice and comfortable place, not just for me, but for other students. Um, our office has gotten a lot of feedback on um, the, from the students saying that they really think our office is um, a super welcoming place. Um, so from that feedback, I decided that it was a really good opportunity to do my research um, through them. Um, so for observing the challenges that I might encounter, when making an exhibit, um, a possible exhibit about the military affiliated population. I drew upon Daniel Miller and Eeyore Kopitoff. And I really wanted, I thought they did a really good job of exempl exemplifying um, what challenges I might encounter. Um, for example, Daniel Miller really does a good job of drawing upon um, meaning from objects and how a lot of people um, you know, have ties to uh, material things and stuff like that. And I think that's important to consider because a lot of people kind of, when they think of the military affiliated population, think of the flag or uniforms. And I think it's really important to hear from the population themselves. Although others may think of a flag and uniform, they themselves may think of other objects instead of those things, um, such as like the veterans. Um, may consider other objects to be important to them. So I think that's important to incorporate. Um, Igor Kopitov also does a good job um, because when creating an exhibit, um, there's a lot of different climates in the world politically. And right now, I think um, it's very, guns are a very controversial topic. And as part of the military affiliated community, um, that is something that you know, is very prominent in conversation, not only um, because of the politics behind it, but also during service. I mean, that's knowing a gun is something that you need to know to be part of the military. And I think that would be one, one of the many things to consider when creating an exhibit because, you know, um, not everybody might agree with putting an object out, out there. People might take offense. And I think it's very important to consider um, any sort of climate that might be problematic. Um, so I think it's very important that uh, the idea that Igor Kapitov drew from was that, you know, material objects, of course, we tie meaning to them, but they change throughout time. And so the controversy behind gun control, it, you, it didn't used to be so, um, you know, so bad. Um, back in time, but now that it's a problem um, and that evolution has come to be within that object, um, that's something to consider. Um, and then I also drew from Maura Simpson and her point about cultural um, education and knowledge transmission. I think when creating an exhibit about this community, that's important to consider. Um, it's important to get um, the ideas and stories and point of view from veterans and dependents or people from the military affiliated community themselves. Um, so that way there's no misrepresentation and um, when people are learning about whatever they need to from the exhibit, um, they hear it from firsthand, you know. Um, and I also drew upon um, Ernid Schildkraut, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, but I thought, you know, it's a very it's a very basic point, but it's still important to consider um, when creating uh, such an exhibit. Um, you want to make sure that you're not putting out there that anything out there that offends any everybody, but that correctly um, represents the community itself. So you definitely want to tie in 
um, the military affiliated community um, and give them information on what kind of uh, work you're doing so that way they can have an input into the exhibit and it makes it um, more successful. But I think those are the definite challenges of making this kind of project. Um, so as for my research, I conducted survey for about 10 people. Um, I asked them to list any objects, words, phrases that they thought of um, just off the top of their head when they thought of the military affiliated community. Um, and then after the listing, I told them to rank each object, one being the most important, eight being the least. Um, and you know what, I did get a lot of mixed results, um, but I did get mostly similarities. Um, I got a lot of words like benefits or flag or uniform, camouflage. Um, and so I did tie into those, although even though I had uh, combinations of same words, I didn't have a lot of similarities when it came to the ranking part of the exercise. Um, a lot of people's importance for each object changed. Um, and I, only, I believe I only had two, which was benefits and money, surprisingly. <laughs> those ranked um, benefits ranked third and the money ranked fifth of importance um, and then i asked two follow-up questions one being uh, what was their affiliation to the community were they a veteran were they a spouse were they dependent um, and then i also asked them if they could think of an object that they thought best represented their ideas about the community itself um, and i did get a lot of similarities in those answers too um, when they thought of but they most mostly thought of a memorial they thought of flag and then of course I did get um, outliers here and there I got uh, results like guns or a DD-214 and if you don't know what that means a DD-214 is a government form that states um, how long you were in service um, what branches you were in what awards and accomplishments you have on record with the military. And of course, those answers and all of them depended a lot upon what they were part of, like through the community, were they a veteran or dependent or spouse. Um, so I think that maybe was one flaw of the research that I did. Um, if I could fix anything, if I did this research um, within a bigger scale, I would definitely take into account um, and make sure that I got a more regulated amount of veterans, dependents, and spouses. I did realize that when I conducted research and I asked them what their affiliation was, I got way more dependents than veterans. Um, and I also think it would be a good idea to get the viewpoint of male and female. Like I said, I did get a lot of similarities in the listing uh, portion of it, but I did get a lot of outliers as well. Um, and I noticed that answers from females and those who are veterans instead of dependents, um, their answers greatly differed from those who are males and just dependents. For example, Dependents mostly listed things like benefits because that's some of the things that they're directly connected to with the military service. Also kind of um, objects just like flag and uniform. Um, but of course the veterans went into more detail such like lack of resources. They went also to a more negative side um, like PTSD, mental health, um, stuff like that. But. You know, when it also came to a woman's point of view, uh, they mentioned things like MST, which is if you don't know what that is, it's military sexual trauma. And it was very interesting to hear that response because a lot of the time people aren't, um, you know, able to hear that side of the story from veterans and female veterans especially. So I would definitely um, make that a point to consider if I were to do this research project again. Um, and, you know, when it comes to grouping my results, I would definitely put things such as material objects, like the flag, uniform, DD-214, boots, money, and then I would also make 
a group concerning things that aren't material, like lack of resources, benefits, um, camaraderie. I did get a lot of answers like that, and I think it's very important to group those because, like I said, depending on whether I'm talking to the veteran or a family member, those answers did differ, differ and I think it would be very interesting to look at those. Um, and for the object that I chose to represent this community, um, it's listed in the paper, or shown in the paper, but I chose a memorial. Um, something that's around the lines of a uniform, boots, a helmet, metal possibly. A lot of them you see have crosses um, or something religious about the person. Um, and you know what, I did get that answer a lot from the second question, second follow-up question that I asked them. Um, and you know what, I after asking those questions, I also asked why. And the main reason that I got for that answer was because um, the veterans and dependents both said that they thought the memorial was the best way to represent the community because one, it doesn't just represent um, the veterans who are serving, it also represents those who died in the line of duty or didn't make it home. And I thought that was very important to capture within the community because not only um, do they feel the camaraderie and, you know, do they objectify things like the flag and uniform, but people also grieve within the military and in a lot of ways become a family because and connect over the loss of loved ones and stuff like that. So I thought that was the best object to do that. Um, and you know what, I'm really glad that I did this research and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do the survey and everything like that because I got to hear from a lot of different sides. Working at CMAS, the Center for Military Affiliated Students, um, I interact with these students every day and getting to hear these thoughts from people that I don't really know, um, it was so interesting because I feel like I got to better know the community even though I'm part of it. Um, I still like to hear the different viewpoints from everybody else and um, I just thought that it did a really good job in clarifying what obstacles I'd have if I tried to create an exhibit based on this community, but it also did a very good job of educating me um, about the military affiliated community itself and it would definitely do a very good job of educating others about what the community itself thinks about them, thinks about the military and stuff like that. A lot of people who are outside of the community have their own ideas about it, but you know, you get to know a different side when you get to interview these people and get to know what they really think. Um, but yeah, so thank you for this opportunity and I'll see you in class.